Welcome back to another episode of Games Done Slow and Bad, where we play games slowly and sometimes we finish them in dramatic fashion. And we're going to fall down this bat-shaped hole here in one second, and we're going to take down none other than Ganon. In the Dark World, get the Triforce and bring peace and order back to this land. I never imagined a boy like you could give me so much trouble. It's unbelievable that you defeated my alter ego, Aghanim, the Dark Wizard, twice! But I will never give you the Triforce. I will destroy you and make my wish to conquer both light and dark worlds come true without delay. Swamp, swamp, swamp. So I think the mechanics in this fight are fascinating and cool for a number of reasons. Um, for one, I think that the... That mechanic here is super neat. Uh, the fact that it goes out, goes in, you have to make use of all of the areas. Um, you have to dodge, which is not something in Zelda games you often think about doing. Uh, most often times in, in newer Zelda games especially, you are just spamming, just spamming the slash button. Alright, so, if you fall down those holes, the game isn't over. You are doing well, lad, but can you break through the secret technique of darkness? And guard! Alright, whoop whoop. Alright, so we hit him, he turns blue. We could hit him with a spin attack when he's transporting, but the quickest way is to uh, bow and arrow him. Ugh. Now when he goes dark, when either of these torches goes out, you are effed. Uh, you basically can't do anything. go out. Ha! <sighs> I am in envy of uh, randomizer players who can do this any quicker. Yeah! And that's it. That's it. We got it. Lights go out and we sit here. Holding our sword above our head and celebrating our victory of Ganon and bringing peace to the world. Now, let's watch some cutscenes. What was really dramatic about this is the game didn't really end here. Normally, when you complete a game, it ends in the credits roll. You actually have to walk into this, so it gave it a little bit more sense of, of you sort of finishing it out. By the way, if you're doing a randomizer, it gives you funny messages here. Welcome, Lonk. I am the essence of the Triforce. The Triforce will grant the wishes in the heart and mind of the person who touches it. If a person with a good heart touches it, it will make his good wishes come true. If an evil-hearted person touches it, it grants his evil wishes. The stronger the wish, the more powerful the Triforce's expression of that wish. Ganon's wish was to conquer the world. That wish changed the Golden Land to the Dark World. Ganon was building up his power here so he could conquer the Light World and make his wish come completely true. But now, you have totally destroyed Ganon. His Dark World will vanish. The Triforce is waiting for a new owner. Its golden power is in your hands. Now touch it. 
with a wish in your heart. I'm going to cut that out of context and throw it in the front of this episode. It's going to be great. Oh, snap. Flat Triforce. It's a flat Stanley of Triforces. We're going to sit back and enjoy this as we watch The Return of the King. Not the movie. That movie wasn't great. The book was much better. And now you see his guards are actually human, so you actually feel less good about murdering all of the guards. Yeah, that's right. I brought it back there. You murdered the guards. The loyal sage is actually brought back to life by your magic. Which is pretty impressive. You allow Sassafras back to Kekariko Town. The, the bird remains free. Your loyal bird gets the eternal gift of freedom. Vultures rule the desert. No one, no one cares about this. The thief is practicing stealing things, which is good. You allowed a thief, um, you know, to continue. Bully makes a friend. You brought back uh, the bully and the little ball guy from the dark world. And now you're supposed to get that they're playing in the light world on Death Mountain. On Death Mountain! Your, your dead uncle recovers. This is Flippers for Sale, Zora's Waterfall. The, the last piece of this, I feel like, is one of the best things on the Super NES. Which, in the assistant at the Magic Shop, when you get to this last scene, it, it feels like it just puts a period on this. Twin Lumberjacks, they cut down a tree, now they're on their second. You gave them their wish. You gave them the knowledge of how to cut down a second tree. Flooploy, you brought him back from, from death. In the Haunted Grove. Venus, Queen of the Fairies, at the Wishing Well. If you didn't use the Wishing Well, this is your first hint that the wishing well existed and that there was a big freaking fairy there just a little thing the door uh, the dwarven swordsmiths making a breadstick the bug catching kid is no longer sick uh, the running guy is just waving at you he's no longer running you took his power away cuz you were jealous you got crazy chicken ladies get her chickens back outside that's nice there's a bug catching kid with his family with the magic bug net of great power. The lost old man wanders around Death Mountain now free of monsters. It's kind of sad he walked all the way across that bridge but didn't have a hammer to knock down those pegs. The forest thief continues in the Lost Woods. And the Master Sword sleeps again. Forever. I just, this part right here just resonates with me. It, it's the end of the hero's journey. It's something timeless. It's a concept, you know, that literally... The, the Greeks were writing about. It's the concept that at the end of the journey, there is sort of an explanation point on that journey. And as we run through, I uh, uh, just want to recap why this is my favorite game. Um, I was incredibly young uh, when Legend of Zelda came out. Um, it was one of the first games I actually had R-Type. And I remember getting a hold of you think know, r-type right that's just a button smashing game a kid loves that sort of game because it doesn't actually require much thought or skill and you get kind of far and you're happy with your progress yada 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 um i ended up getting this and i don't remember what by what means i got it but my parents were incredibly generous with me growing up um and it, it presented you the first opportunity with a world that had just such beauty with the pre-rendered pixelated graphics, um, just 
amazing beauty that you could explore. It dropped you in there and it gave you a loose list of tasks that needed to be completed and it numbered them one, two, three. Uh, but it didn't force you to do them in any particular order. You could jump around all you wanted. If you wanted to go at the bow and then progress to something else, blah, 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 go ahead and do it. Um, it still gave you this immense wonder, uh, similar to the first Zelda, uh, but with improved graphics, more items, greater challenges, uh, more collectibles in the heart pieces, uh, gambling games, target practice games, which I mean we did in this run, way, way, way more uh, sort of du unique dungeons that looked incredibly different. Um, it is a trailblazer in what it did. It's one of the reasons why I also like Illusions of Gaia, which is much more niche than this. Uh, so I'm not trying to be a hipster in that way. But the other thing about this game that I don't think any other game nails, and we're actually going to be the sound composer. The music elicits an emotional response. So few games have music that connects you thoroughly to the subject matter. Whether you're in a dungeon, or you're in the Lost Woods, or you're pulling out the Master Sword or you're, you're listening to the outro sequence, you feel emotionally invested and connected to the story because it's giving you sounds that, that just bring forward these strong emotions. That's amazing to me. It really is. Um, I can't say enough about that. We're heading towards the end of this, and I'm, I'm sad. I'm sad that this is over because I love this game. But I have, I have things. I have things, my friends. Zelda's not gone, oh no. We are going to tackle things that you've probably never seen. I don't know what the games are, but okay. I thought this was, uh, I guess it's only the randomizer that gives you some nice chests. Um, and it also doesn't re, uh, realign it, which is interesting. Is this like game overs? I don't think this is game overs, because I didn't game over and gain the tower. Um, total games played. Oh, I think it's every time, okay. I logged in here 21 times. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I recorded a couple episodes in parts. Zelda's not gone, my friends. Well, the screen says the end. We can pretty much take solace in the fact that Games Done Slow is never going to fully get away from the Legend of Zelda. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice night.